Over the past three years, over a million Muslims have been rounded up and held captive in Chinese concentration camps. This is the largest mass incarceration of a minority group in the world today. It is the largest incarceration of an ethnic group since the Holocaust. And yet, it's not being talked about. Most of us don't even know about it. And it is still going on right now. So let's talk about it. Uyghurs are a Turkic Muslim ethnic minority residing in the Xinjiang Autonomous Region in northwestern China. They are being systematically targeted, repressed, and persecuted. Police officers, frequent checkpoints, and mass surveillance make it nearly impossible for Uyghurs to worship or practice Islam without risking persecution. There are reports of cameras being installed in people's homes and security officials living with families to monitor them. Since 2017, the government has been arbitrarily arresting Uyghurs and other Muslim minority groups, holding them indefinitely in concentration camps and forcing them to give up their religion and undergo what China calls re-education. About 10% of Uyghurs in Xinjiang are locked up in camps. That's over 1 million people from a single ethnic group being held against their will without trial. Why is this happening? China claims that the Uyghurs hold extremist views that are a threat to the country's security. The government claims the purpose of these camps is, quote, to get rid of the environment and soil that breeds terrorism and religious extremism and stop violent terrorist activities from happening. Chinese authorities call Islamic radicalism a virus that has infected Muslim groups such as the Uyghurs. Muslims must be quarantined within these camps to be cured of their extremism. But these are not terrorists by any stretch of the definition. They're huge numbers of innocent people whose only crime is living by their cultural or religious values. And the camps are about more than re-educating Uyghurs to get rid of Islamic extremism. Here's what Omar Kanat, the director of the Uyghur Human Rights Project, says. The Chinese government is forcing detainees to renounce their religion, renounce their culture, renounce their identity, forcing them to speak Mandarin, and forcing them to say there is no God, there is only the Communist Party. Individuals who have first-hand experience in these detention centers tell stories of brainwashing, forced labor, sterilization, family separation, torture, and even death. These camps are not the only way China is trying to wipe out Islam. Mosques have been destroyed, copies of the Quran confiscated, halal food forbidden, and beards and head coverings banned. The government even published an official list of how to spot signs of religious extremism. Things as harmless as refusing to play volleyball, Owning a tent, having a prayer rug, and giving up drinking and smoking are considered signs of Islamic extremism that could lead to imprisonment. So if everything is so tightly controlled and monitored in Xinjiang, how do we know about these concentration camps at all? Since media and journalists are almost completely banned from the province, getting any information out is difficult. A lot of the information we do have about the camps comes directly from the people who were detained there. But in 2017, a series of documents were leaked from the Chinese government that finally revealed the inner workings of the detention centers to the world. These leaks are known as the China Cables. The documents include a nine-page memo sent from Xinjiang's top security official with instructions on how to run the camps. Instructions include things like never allow escapes, increase discipline and punishment of behavioral violations, promote repentance and confession, make remedial Mandarin studies the top priority, encourage students to truly transform, and ensure full video surveillance and coverage of dormitories and classrooms free of blind spots. So what is the rest of the world doing about this? Hardly anything, unfortunately. In July 2019, 22 countries, including Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand, signed a letter to the United Nations calling on China to end the concentration camps in Xinjiang. Just days later, 37 other countries published another letter congratulating China on their efforts to counter terrorism with these camps. These included several Muslim-majority countries like Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, and Algeria.
None of these countries want to mess with China's economic might. Many of them are quite happy with the billions of dollars in Chinese investments. Moreover, China can easily quash criticism with sanctions and cyber attacks. Better to stay on China's good side, the argument goes. The strongest action taken so far was by the U.S. government just a few months ago. In June 2020, the Uyghur Human Rights Policy Act was signed into law. It places sanctions on top Chinese officials responsible for the camps and blocks certain imports from the region. China has retaliated, imposing reciprocal measures against U.S. officials and the Commission on China. But still, a lot more needs to be done. So what can you do to help? First, stay informed. There is so much more to this crisis than we have covered today. So read up on the issue and learn as much as you can. Second, contact your government officials. Find out what action they're taking and push them to do more. For example, your country could offer refugee status to Uyghurs who escape. Third, Boycott the world's leading companies that purchase items made by Uyghur forced labor or contribute to the surveillance infrastructure in Xinjiang. Fourth, sign petitions. Change.org, StopGenocide.org and Amnesty International have several ongoing petitions to end the concentration camps in China. This is a quick, easy, free way that you can help make a change. Finally, share this story. Make sure China knows that the world hasn't forgotten about this. Make sure the Uyghurs know that their struggles will not be pushed aside. Let your voice be heard. I'm Safiya Ali for Let the Quran Speak.